Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, today in the arena. Well, it didn't take long. Is that epiphany, all the band talk, the 75% win rate, and then within a day, the results had shifted dramatically because just like we learned in Standard 2022, Mono Green trounces is it. Uh, it doesn't always trounce is it, not every single game, but it's definitely favored in the matchup. And that 75% win rate in competitive events I talked about for Epiphany, by day two, had fallen to 50%. And the number one most played deck had gone from, of course, being is it Epiphany to being the one, the green, the mono green. But not exactly the mono green from Standard 2022. Now, earlier in the format, we showed off a version with Ren and Seven as the five drop of choice, that very, very value town-based green deck that could kind of go either way, either be very defensive or be very aggressive and just had value and power at every spot in the curve. And that version is still out there. You still see a good amount of Ren and Seven in mono green. But you're also seeing people play a different five drop, Unnatural Growth, and this is one and quad green, so five mana total for an enchantment, and at the beginning of each combat, double the power and toughness of each creature you control until end of turn. If you're interested in playing a long grindy game sometimes and a solid, mostly unstoppable, resilient beatdown plan a good amount of the time, Ren and Seven is exactly what the doctor ordered. If you just wanna end the game as fast as possible, Unnatural Growth is like a 10-10 with haste for five mana if you have some creatures on the battlefield to pump. So you can see why when they're thinking about we just want to beat Is It before it copies an All Runs Epiphany, you look at Unnatural Growth and you say, okay, yep, that's it. That's how we want to end the game. So that's what we're going to be playing today is showing off the raw, unmatched aggression of unnatural growth, which isn't my forte. I'm much more of the Ren and Seven type of player. So instead of the 10 to 20 minute games you may have become used to here on this channel from the control fest I threw for the last week or so, now you're gonna get some hopefully just solid green beat down, it's over. The rest of the deck is super familiar, right? Not a lot of cards here are new outside of Unnatural Growth. In 2022, you played Snakeskin Veil and Inscription of Abundance, Blizzard Brawl, Lotus Cobra, Ranger Class, Werewolf Pack Leader, Old Grove Troll, Kazandu Mammoth, and Seeker's Chariot. I will say that for the mana creature of choice, Lotus Cobra wins in this spot, and the reason is... Obviously, you want a mana creature with two power because you'd like to double it. Just Paris Sentinel being doubled off an unnatural growth doesn't do much. It helps you fix your mana for the troll. It helps you play your cards a turn sooner. Like, all that's clear. But the fact that this can make mana and attack on the same turn and that you can double the punch it delivers with the unnatural growth puts it a cut above the other options. It is weird to play an aggro deck with no one drops, but that's the format we've been handed and that's where we live now. So this version doesn't have just spare Sentinel, Swarm Shambler, or the little fungus. It's just going to start its play on turn two and roll from there. We've got three copies of Lair of the Hydra and three copies of Faceless Haven. You need the Snowlands for the Blizzard Brawl. You need the green sources for the Old Growth Troll. I am not sure on exactly what the right number of these creature lands are. I do know that if you don't draw one, that can often cost you the game. The creature land is very important to the deck, so you always wanna have one. I also know that in pretty much every game, if I drew out my curve and mapped it perfectly, it would be one layer of the Hydra played on turn one or two, then two snow-covered forests and one faceless haven, something like that. So I think three of each, three is usually the go-to number. When you wanna draw one of something, but you don't really want to. We're also going back to Kazandu Mammoth, a card I didn't play that much in Standard 2022 as Frostbite was uh, starting to be a very, very common thing. But Kazandu Mammoth here makes sure that we hit all of our land drops and it gets its power doubled by a natural growth. So getting it in there for 10 is on the menu. So we're gonna run it. All right, that's a quick introduction to the deck. We'll let you absorb the list for a second while I remind you that if you hit the join button below, that nice little button, it for $4.99 supports the channel and there are perks. For example, I post my stream VODs on YouTube for members only. You guys can watch those at 2x speed on YouTube without having to go to Twitch if you want to keep up with what I'm doing on stream, which is usually me trying out the decks that will hopefully be the future of the stream, doing standard events, or just talking about magic with uh, the Twitch chat, which is, you know, it's really fun. I actually like talking about magic quite a bit on the streams as you'll 
find out, of course, if you watch them. And then the next thing, the next perk, is you get the special Discord channel called the Cool Kids Club. It's hidden, and it's only for members, Twitch subscribers, and patrons. So the three... Uh, financial support networks of the channel and you get access to a channel there that shows you tomorrow's deck list 24 hours early i see comments every day that say i figure out what cgb is going to play and then i anti-deck it for a day and that's how i beat the meta well you can have that information 24 hours early if you hit the join button below you can also start playing the deck before it gets super popular and hopefully get some win equity before people prepare for it so that's the join button below hit it see if it works for you thank you very much and if you can't afford to or don't want to that's okay i will tell you straightforward watching the channel is supporting the channel so thank you very much for watching now let's dive in let the unnatural nonsense begin this is mono green. We play mono green. Mono green. Mono green. Well, you need to draw land. We're on the draw. So let's believe in drawing land. Interesting. What could it mean? It's looking bad, guys. It's looking bad. This is not the way you want to start your day. Getting them to play a Blizzard Brawl that way, though, is fine. Like, that's a, that's a premium card in the matchup, and they threw it away on a wolf token. So, who knows? Maybe we can get them somehow. So I think we want to go for a wide board, take a bunch of damage doing it, and then hope to slam a natural growth and win. So if we draw two straight lands, that that line is looking really good. Our opponent might be trying to do the same thing, but we can't beat that. So no need to worry about it. We also don't draw the land. So I guess I need this troll to block. We have to trade off the troll here just to get the mana. We do not get to trade off the troll here to get the mana. Six ranger classes. Shuffler's fine. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here we can play chariot ranger class. Try to block twice. And then next turn, play the growth and get in for how much? Well, it depends how many blockers they have, of course. We can also play this defensively, which is an interesting idea. Is it time to give up my Cobra? They might trade for it. It's done a lot of work. So with these attacking, we're at seven. We can take one hit, block one other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Do we attack with both? We attack with both. We've got to find aggression in this. We might just lose to some Blizzard Brawls, but again, like this is a hate. We're just throwing it. We're throwing everything at him because we're playing from behind. We have to take risk. Okay. Okay. Let's hope they just make the token and attack with everything. Okay. They're falling into our trap. So we can attack with the chariot next turn. So I think we actually block with it here. Let me think about that. 12. So we need to get through with three creatures. If we block with two, we still have three. Okay. That's the way it is. Wolves are more valuable than cats in this meta. Sorry, kitty. You're dead. 
You're dead. <laughs> Ooh, that feels cheesy. On the play, we've got the lands. Let's do it. Fire up the valley. Gotta remember, though, that's not a snow permanent. Easy thing to forget. Okay, they have a play with fire. We'll drop the pack leader. Hopefully it survives. If the pack leader makes it through a turn, the veil and the inscription are going to make it really hard to deal with. Smoldering egg. Okay. I'll just sit here. Be like, wow, dude, smoldering egg. God, what do we do about smoldering egg? It's so terrifying. And then we go... I guess I'll attack? No big deal or nothing? And they'll go block. And we'll go... Ripped. Kill it. And then we play this land, no big deal. And they'll be like, I play island, I divide this by zero, and we'll snake skin veil. Planes? Planes? Our opponent's gone crazy. They got nothing to get back. They're 2 2 hasting. Okay. Just solid 2 2 haste. So they don't have brutal Cathar or something like that. I think we just want to play this Cobra here and keep up the Snakeskin Veil because I think if we have Snakeskin Veil available, they can't win. We could also Blizzard Brawl this. But I think they might have a dragon coming. Blizzard Brawling this draws a card, though. That's so good. You know me. That makes me happy. I think this gets played with fire, though. We could save it with the Veil, but I'd rather save the Pack Leader. Sorry, hard to resist drawing a card. Owie. Pack leader out here throwing hands, baby. What you got? They've got a removal spell. You can almost lock it in. So I think our line here is to... We could pump the pack leader and attack with it and draw a card. Or we could play the chariot and have a better battlefield presence. Drawing cards, man. It's catnip. But I don't think we do that here. Let's attack. They didn't do anything. Opponent, do something! You're dying! You're so close to death. At least try to make it look close. Well, on the play's nice. I'm very nervous I'll miss a land. But I think we keep it. Pack leader's so good. Ranger class, so good. So what do we lead with? What do we lead with? You. It hits the hardest. Can't If it's wrong, it's not wrong by much. And it's dead. All right, so we're fighting as it turns, and our 28 land deck is missing land. Feels good. This is the matchup we want, but just not the way we want to play it. I'm trying to figure out if holding inscription does any good. I guess this doesn't get divided by zero easily. I Let's just go all in on this little wolf here and just get the clock ticking. And that's enough of that. Well, even your 28 land deck doesn't have enough lands. Welcome to magic. Wow, a four land hand. 
it actually happened. But it's not the way you want it, is it? Because you don't want to play these early and then... Like, you have to play these early, so these are tapped later. So you, there's no way that this hand curves. Um, I guess we're just relying on Ranger class to fill the difference. To fill the void. Okay. We could also just draw Forest. The hardest thing to draw in our deck, apparently. And if we do, it turns on all of this stuff. We could be playing these as creatures. <gasps> Must be my birthday. Oh! Black blue. Black blue, who are you? I think we want to play the troll. Actually, we want to play a mammoth. That That's what we want to do. Because then we'll still have a land drop the next turn, another mammoth to pump it, if it actually were to survive. So, let's attack first. Before we give them information about the rest of our plans. Resolves. Another option is to activate Ranger class there, but if the opponent has a removal spell, uh, as they did, and they just kill our one creature, we activated the class for nothing. We got no plus one, plus one counters, so we have no battlefield traction. Excuse me? They lose one life and you gain one life. What? Lifelink 4-4 four, four, when it transforms to night. Okay. I mean, I haven't had the Curse of Leeches before. Is it bad? Will I recover? This is this is new to me. <laughs> Field of Ruin, scary. All right, they have a lifelink 4-4. Four, four. Can we kill it? We don't have the Snowlands. Because, of course, why would we? Um, however, we can activate Ranger Class, attack with our troll, if our troll were to die, then we can enchant this forest and play another troll. If our troll gets bounced or something like that happens, that's much worse. They might take it, plan to attack me with the 4-4 lifelink, which is a good race. Nope, they're going to go for Mastery, which is an Exile effect, and is an absolute blowout. We are getting nommed on by garbage. <laughs> okay. Opponent's brilliant deck building is, is coming for us. Hey, hey, it's working for them, okay? It's working. I get it. That's exciting to some of you nerds. All right, another snow-covered forest. Do we try to get unnatural? We only have one creature. If they kill it, we're gonna die. If they have saw it coming and they counter the chariot or the troll, we're in terrible position. Everything's pretty rough. We have to decide what to play around. And I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure what the right answer is, but given that our opponent's showing us a lot of spot removal, I'm tempted to play around spot removal. Oh, okay. They kind of gave it away here with the Fading Hope. They don't have a saw it coming. This lets us play the Chariot, which is a big deal. Again, we don't have the snow permanence for Blizzard Brawl to be indestructible, or I would definitely brawl this. Do we take this? I feel like if we try to block it, something terrible will happen to us. I also feel like the opponent's going to remove this chariot either way, so I think we try to block with it. I, I think if we wait till our turn, try to power it up and attack with it, they'll just use a removal spell then. So let's just get the removal spell now. Or a trade. I'll take a trade. This is the nastiest thing going on. Okay. We killed it! We did it. Okay. Draw. Come on. Come on. Snow covered permanent. Let's go. Snow covered permanent. That's rough. 
That's not what we were looking for. But we can resolve unnatural growth. All right, 15 to 18, we have the unnatural growth. They have the Emrith. Do they have the All Runs Epiphany and the Untapped Land? They recurse us. It's nighttime, so it's just a 4 4 lifelinker. And they foretell. Do they attack? It's a gutsy attack. It does draw two cards. They could be in trouble here. Okay. How do we kill this? We can't, right? Man. Um, that stupid lifelink. How much can we hit for if we do kill it, though? Also, just the one snow permanent missing is, is so brutal. If we play this troll, we snakeskin veil it, and we fight this. The opponent will go up to 23. We will attack for... Not enough. So we need multiple more turns. We can flip this by playing two spells. We can Blizzard Brawl the Imrith. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So we do it in this order. There's 11 damage. The curse is gonna take one for the team. That's good for us. It's not, though, because now this plus this is a trade. So I guess the right play was to play this pre-combat. It gives away the information, but we could have crewed it, made it an 8-8, and then the fight would work. So now what do we do? We can Snakeskin Veil here and Brawl. I hate that. I think I just brawl away my cat. Sorry, kitty. Say goodbye. And then we play the chariot and make more. That's how you get over the death of your favorite cat. Just head to the animal shelter. I'm, I'm being, I'm, I'm being, I'm being cold. I don't mean to be. That's hitting somebody out there too hard. Oh look, I take turns. I am turns gamer. Woo! All right, how many do they have? They don't have another one. So what card is this? Also, what are they hoping to steal from me? A chariot? I guess a chariot's good. A troll. I don't think that'll help them very much. I think we're ahead now. Weird. Saw it coming? Maybe? Maybe? So we'll have two blockers. Ten life. Another All Runs Epiphany is really bad for us. But I think we can do this. I think we have to keep applying a lot of pressure. Also worth noting, this works on their turn as well, so this will be a 4-4 blocker. Okay. Siphon Insight is an amazing card in a control mirror. Siphon Insight, it's a risky card. It's a difficult card. It's it's where the haters on the card get a little ugh at it is fighting aggro. Because what are they going to do? Take an unnatural growth here? Take a forest? 
I bet that's where my lands go. To my opponents. Delver of Secrets. Ah, oh. oh, Delver. Delver. The ultimate trap. My goodness. Many, many a good mage died trying to make Delver not suck in this format. Power up. We're going to hit him hard. They're going to feel it. Do you think they have removal? I think they do. I guess we've got the veil, though. <clears throat> well. Spin the wheel. Double up. You can just feel their excitement mounting as they aim this removal spell. But they also know we didn't power this up for four and we could have. In their heart, they know it's all about this snakeskin veil. Make him huge. The rope won't save you now. Inscription. They're going to fight the lair. Okay. Well, the troll's gonna die no matter what it blocks, so you may as well. They also had Field of Ruin to do that job. Meow. It's not lethal. They trade with one of the cats, okay? Their troll cannot attach to a forest, so it goes to the graveyard. Comeback time, opponent. What you gonna do? <laughs> Please cast an unnatural growth. It would make my day. <laughs> Got him. Wookie one. The original Wookie. Wookie patient zero. Well, all snow-covered forests this time. Our Blizzard Brawl might actually grant that little indestructibleness. Slaughter Specialist, huh? Fun. Pack is here. I think they'll kill this. I don't think you play Slaughter Specialist, which, by the way, gets a plus one, plus one counter when a creature dies, and it gives me a one, one human just for casting it. I don't think you play this if you can't kill things. Okay, the Massacre, but they didn't attack. Coward. We could go Troll, or we could go Brawl. I mean, Brawl and then having double pack leader is a lot. They they have to they have to have solutions to the double pack leader and they didn't kill the werewolf last turn they killed the one one, which is not where you want to be. They're gonna paint some treasure stuff. They're they're artists. They have reckless storm seeker. Oh, they're in okay. That's a three four though, but they're attacking. Why are they attacking? I don't think they figured. I don't think they thought through the attack, but maybe I'm missing something. 
Maybe their plan is to cheese me out with dragons. Blizzard Brawl, please. No. Chariot Troll. Chariot. It's eight total attacking power for next turn and an opponent on 11 life. If they play some kind of dragon and they pump it, or a phoenix, they're still on the defensive here. The meat hook has a big impact on the race. Whoa. Really? Is that a trap? I think that's an oops. What for one black is going to get me here? There's a few combat tricks, but I just, I don't believe in them. They don't really exist. I shouldn't be doing this. I should just be trying to attack and win. But, oh well. I guess they use their Stormseeker as a burn effect. Okay, guys. Our hand only does one thing. We power up and charge. Block here, take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fall to one. But they scoop it up, so I guess they didn't have a way through. They had four more damage in the air, they had one more damage from this dying. So I would be at four, so a top deck gold span would have killed me. Hmm, interesting. Evisor. On the play, cobras and chariots. Let's see what happens. Courtesy tap, so we don't have to click through everything the opponent may choose to do. Mono white, the nemesis of mono green. Do we go for double cobra? Yeah, yeah, we definitely go for a cobra because we want to play chariot next turn. Being on the play here is where it's at. Oh, <gasps> you animal. How could you? Oh, what a perfect start. What a perfect on the draw start. Not nearly as good on the play. Like, they're actually really happy we went first. Also, this sucks. I drew this pack leader, so now I have to play... I should have played this last turn. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about the fact that I could draw a pack leader, and now I can't play it. Thankfully, we have the ranger class. It's not the end of the world. But... This is not going well. Our opponent's hand was so on the draw perfect, and I'm jelly. I'm very jelly. Could kill it. Then we'd have no board. I think our plan for this is chariot. And we drew the land so we can do it. We can also inscription here. Inscription could kill the Luminarch Aspirate and gain us some life and get us aggressive. We also won't necessarily have five mana next turn because of how Cobra works. We'll see if they have another portable hole. If they do, that's not good. Would I block here? I think I can gum up the ground, so I think I need to stay aggressive, but I'm going to be taking more on the backswing. And I, I, I'm just, I have this theory that I'm going to lose this anyway. If I'm going to lose it anyway, I should attack with it, right? I guess the opponent though, we want to put them in a position where they have to play a Brutal Cathar here. Weak-minded. I tell you what. Freaking kids these days. They got no gumption, man. They can't play through something that makes them sad. They just have to go in the corner and cry. Pathetic. On the play. Play a mammoth. Turn two, nothing. Turn three, troll or mammoth. Turn four, chariot. On the draw, I could never keep this. I'm going to try it on the play. It feels too slow to me. 
Really need to draw a two drop. If we rip a two drop off the top, I'm the best at magic. Everything's fine. Oh no, goblins, shuffler, hit me. Of course, only the best from the shuffler. But I guess we get these tap lands out of the way, so now we can curve troll, chariot, maybe unnatural growth. A nine rolly. Oh, that means you don't get an equip? Okay, I like it. Roar. Come and get it. Come and get it, baby. Three mana, four, four. Little red deck just cowering in the corner. I will take the ramp. If they're gonna ramp me, I'll take it. Let's go. Nope. They had nothing. They had nothing. You love to see it. Let's switch the... Let's switch this script and go after them. Here's a Sika's Chariot. Do you like cats? I've got some. What a coward. All right. Um, no blocks. This is fine. Sudden breakthrough. <laughs> Earth strike and a treasure. It was a trap all along. Who knew? Oh. Oh, baby. What? Is that even the play, though? I mean, this comes in for... Oh, they have to chump block. And we get a creature. It's the play. It's the play. That swing with the troll looking great here. They just have to chump away their only creature. <laughs> their only significant creature. I'm not counting you. No respect. Well, that is impressive. <laughs> Very impressive. Clap for the opponent, everybody. All right. I will devour this goblin because I can. What has Mono Red become? Look how far they've fallen. It would make me sad if I, you know, didn't also hate them. On the play, will we draw land? If I get stuck on two land, in my 28 land deck again, I might scream a little. But when you keep a hand like this, in the back of my mind, I know honestly, it's a very real possibility. Courtesy tap, courtesy tap. Be nice to your opponents before you crush their souls. How wide do we go here? I think we try to go wide. So I think we play this and then next turn play Cobra, play land. Fading hope, man. Hard is the nuts. Don't care what nobody says, but we gotta get it out of their hand anyway. We wanna use our Cobra while we have the land drop to use our Cobra with. I know, big brain. All right, probably gonna use a veil here. Let's drop this first. Make a green. Um, let's go for the troll. They might counter or divide it. I guess that would be fine. Resolves, great. If we activate the ranger class, then they'll probably kill whatever we put the counter on anyway. And if we hold up the veil, we probably get too far ahead. Although it doesn't seem like they have anything for that turn, which is Pretty great for us. And now iteration? Ah, they're in trouble. They're in trouble now. 
They're going into their sweeper turn. If it's Battle of Frost Empire, now the troll will survive it. And they've got to do something. And they've got to get through a veil. And they've got to get through a troll coming back from the dead. So, I don't know what they're going to do. It probably involves, now that they've played Iteration, they need more Fading Hope. But this is the matchup. Is it versus Mono Green? This is where Mono Green makes its money in the current meta. And this is where Expressive Iteration looks like you dirtled and did nothing with your life. Well done. You're dead. Cool cards, bro. Username. You're supposed to type something there. Jeez. That is an unkeepable hand if I have ever seen one. This one still doesn't have a two drop and it's on the draw. So we've got a mulligan this one too. I think. I mean, basically, the hand is completely uncastable. Because we can't even cast the troll. And this does nothing, and this does nothing. I, yeah, it's gotta go as well. We're gonna mold a five on the draw. Alright, we got the double pack leader hand. That can run away with a game if the opponent's not prepared. Will we get mana screwed again? I can't count how many times I've had two lands with the deck, and we're still winning a lot, so it's not the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination, but it's nice to see that snow-covered forest. Let's hope they power up Ranger class. This is catnip to magic players. They just can't resist it. Hopefully you've seen a few times today that I, you know, don't always power up Ranger class at the first opportunity. Dubs class. Okay. Interesting. Um, I think we go for Dub's Pack Leader then. And next turn we can Inscription, maybe? We could attack here. The opponent might be too scared to block. If they do block, they have no board presence from Inscription. And then we play the Tapped Mammoth and pass. And that's not bad. Okay, we attack. It does give away some things about our hand. If they have a Snakeskin Veil, it's all a big trade. I guess I'll take it. Okay, they tried to fake me out like they blocked by touching them both and then hitting the button. It's a crafty arena move. But you won't get me. Doesn't work on the one. Invest of one. So, yeah, this is a very scary counterattack if they were to use their classes and swing. Because we draw a lot of cards. And they have a troll. Do we kill this troll? The awkward thing with the Cobra Man is you do have to use it right away. If we fought it with the Lotus Cobra and put the counters there, it would die, and then these two could attack and draw two cards, and that would be fun. I think that what's better is we play the Mammoth, and we just use the Inscription Pump ability on whichever one the troll blocks. I guess we're not attacking with the Cobra then, so we can do this after. We don't have to do it before. I talked about Ranger class being catnip to aggro mages. Catnip to me, drawing cards with this pack leader, baby. I can't resist. All right, so they do some good blocking. I applaud. Um, let's let them keep the troll, because it ramp of the ramps and we'll put the two counters right there we're definitely at risk of a blizzard brawl i'm nervous but we'll make it work yeah first blizzard brawl here might just win the game it's gonna be hard to beat we're also on for unnatural growth if we draw it. It's a good card. The solid, solid card. That's an interesting card.
We don't actually need to kill Ren, but attacking it could make a big difference. We make extra mana. What do we do with it? Let's see. Play that for two. Play this land tap. One, two, three, four. We can pump. But then we can't, don't have Veil. We want the Veil to get over the Tree Folk. So we don't play the Cobra. Till after. This is it. This is our Haymaker. Or do we attack the Wren? think we attack the face. If we send this over here, they have to let five damage through. So we have a chance here to trade a Cobra for five damage. we will probably eat it with the troll and that's fine. Where's the blizzard brawls guys? We need them. We need them. I'll take an unnatural growth too. They double up on the leader. They're playing around the veil. Okay. Oh, we'll kill the tree folk. I'm actually pretty happy to leave the troll alone. I don't like ramping them. And the wren dies, so they might have another wren. But now we have blizzard brawl protection. That's a card. Not a very good one in the situation though. And I think unnatural growth is just a lot better. We don't block. They, they can have their card. I mean, we're going to be attacking them for a lot. Like, now we're just... Yeah. Like, are they going to be able to recover from this attack? They're going to be so low on life, and our board is so much wider. Who wants to be ripped? They could have their own unnatural growth here. It's not enough to kill me. Toski picking on a cobra is something. Let's just go here. Oops. I miscounted. I thought they'd be at two. Hope I don't lose the game for that. It's fine. Fine. Gave him a, gave him a little equity point. I I thought I did my math wrong. I forgot about the plus one plus one counter. Totally forgot about the plus one plus one counter. And we are back for the post game wrap. And let's talk about the stats powered by Untapped.gg. Eight and one. Our only loss when we actually did get stuck on two lands in our twenty. Eight land deck. Uh, we we cut it close a number of times. Uh, it was kind of terrifying how often I had to keep a two lander and get there, but we usually did. So I guess the shuffler for the most part bailed me out, and I shouldn't be skeptical of it. But I mean, come on, if I you out there, you know the feeling. You keep a two lander and you're like, oh, I really, 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 really need to draw this land, and I put a lot of land in my deck. Why am I in this position where I am scared on turn one or two that I'm not gonna draw land? But most of the time we did. The one time we didn't, we lost. So that's an eight and one, and the deck is an absolute smashing and bashing machine. Let's I let's let's go to the main CGB profile. I've you might have noticed a change kind of on the channel that since the ladder reset, I've only tried to play the really good decks, the decks that I think are the best. Let's check out the ladder stats for this specific season. Eleven and two, six and zero, oh, eight and one. Wow. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, since since the ladder reset, we've lost three games. We've won 14, 25, 25 and three in best of one. Did I do that math right? 14 plus 11 is 25. One plus two is three. 25 and three in best of one. That's an absurd hot streak. 
That's absurd. That's not going to continue. But it's pretty fun to look at, and it's, of course, fun to experience. Winning is fun. I think a lot of you can, we can just honestly look in the mirror and say, like, yeah, winning on ladder is way more fun than losing. So that's been uh, in, an enjoyable experience. Will it continue? Probably, and I'll definitely get back to playing some nonsense and brewing. But it shows, if you're playing really good decks early in a format where a lot of people are experimenting on ladder, you can climb really quickly. So if your goal is mythic fast, get out there and do it. Um, play the best decks, don't compromise, and uh, yeah, you'll get unlucky sometimes, but power through. It's good for you. Feels good, man. Um, as for this deck, what would I change? Inscription was okay. I'm I'm kind of always on the lookout for changing Inscription. I also thought Veil was medium, but I think it's necessary. It keeps your threats on the board and it's very important to have threats on the board if you're going to play in a natural growth top end because a natural growth with no creatures is sad and nothing good happens so i think that having some amount of protection spells is important i would almost run four and i'm thinking about going up to three or four because there's not really one mana spells in the deck so if your curve is two drop into two drop into four drop you need something to do with that third mana in there and blizzard brawl or snakeskin veil really helps out so, yeah, I, I could see four snakeskin veils. The inscription wasn't terrible, but the opponents were pretty good at actually playing against it, something that didn't happen in 2022. People never felt prepared for inscription very well. Unnatural growth itself, nobody's prepared for. It absolutely stole games. So before this video gets seen by absolutely everybody, and this tech is played in a lot of places, um, use it because like our very first game, The Mirror, people don't expect absolute beat down out of nowhere. The other thing is, even if they do, it's kind of hard to play around because what are they going to do? Hold back, not attack with their aggro deck? Because if you play this, it works on defense too. So you can just hold back your creatures if you don't have the lethal attack and now they can't attack you. So it's actually harder to play around than it looks. The best way to play around it is to kill everything and Snakeskin Veil would play against that. So yeah, if I were going to try the next version of the deck, I would cut two inscriptions, I would play two, snake, two more snakeskin veils and try it. Another card that I want in the deck and I can't figure out what to cut for is Primal Adversary. This is the new card and there aren't many new cards in the deck, so it would be nice to have more. And uh, Primal Adversary makes, it has Trample on its own, so it's a really good card to double the power of with Unnatural Growth. And it can make a whole bunch of 3-3s. Three so some of those have haste. That with unnatural growth can create an army out of nowhere and be really awesome. But I can't cut anything. Um, it just... Is it going to take a troll spot? No way. The mammoth, the mana is too important. Um, chariot? Absolutely not. The cobras? I don't think so. So maybe you don't need four unnatural growths. This was kind of what I call the content play. Uh, a way to make mono green a little different for today's video. Should... <clears throat> it's also a really fun, exciting card. People like to see it in action. Do you need four of these? I If you ran, like, two of these and two Ren and Sevens, I get that. If you ran, like, one of these, two or three Ren and Sevens, and a Primal Adversary or two, maybe. But we can't deny that it worked. We can't deny... <clears throat> we can't deny that it did its job today. Losing my voice. Sorry about that. Don't know what's going on there. But... Up to you. How many unnatural growths is the right number? I would say crafting up to four, that's a personal decision. And I'm not absolutely positive four is where you need to be. I will say that if you get in a stalemate and you have two of these or three of these in play, it's really fun. <laughs> it's it's obs the obsceneness that a cat token grows to. It A cobra that taller than a building. It's, it's, it's really fun. So enjoy that. Anyway, I'm rambling now. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next one. You're cool.